folks, so I wanted to give a review of the Michaels Bot Loops and Threads Circular Knitting Machine. And I'm going to go ahead and show you a demonstration of me using it for the first time. It's called Loops and Threads Circular Knitting Machine. First thing I notice is it does not have a counter on it. So that's one downside, I would say, to buying this circular knitting machine. It does have the option to go from panel or to circular. And you just kind of click it here and there. Yarn holder for tension. And you can barely tell, but you can see that there are numbers, but it's a 40 pin machine. It's how okay. this machine is going to work with yarn. I have your basic Super Saver, Red Heart, Worsted Weight, 4 ply yarn. So let's reset this to the 1, and like there is no counter, so you have to hand jam the numbers. Okay, there's 1. Okay, there's the black pin. So I would recommend I'll probably draw a black line. I'll try color this pin right here black. So let's go ahead and cast on just like we always do. Okay, so we're going to go in and out of each pin to cast on. And you can see where I'm hooking it underneath here. Let's get a little bit of a close up so you can see okay how I cast on here. Of course, another YouTube video where I show a little more clearly of how you cast on properly but this kind of shows it as well. Basically you're going on the outside of a white pin and then on the inside of a white pin. So every other one should be inside, outside, inside, all the way around till you get to the start, which we're about to get to here. Okay, so as you can see, that's where we started, right? So now that we're here, we're gonna go ahead and put the yarn, make sure it's on the back of the white pin, through your yarn holder Usually put the yarn down low or on the ground and make sure it's just loose. Now this didn't come with any clamps, it didn't come with any suction cups, so I imagine it's going to be kind of difficult and I would probably recommend putting tape or something down. It's going to uh, go slow and see how it doesn't. And see it's already, I'm already having issues trying to keep it in place where am I going to have to like brace myself on it so that it doesn't come out of place. That's why it needs a uh, suction cups or tape or something on the bottom, otherwise this makes it kind of hard. Okay, so I'm just checking. It's moving around a lot. It's not staying down. Okay, so it's made it all the way around. And so I'm just also checking to make sure I don't drop any stitches or get any tucked stitches. Looks okay. So I haven't been counting, but I believe this is row two. It's either two or three. Okay, let's move the tension of the yarn. I think it might be too tight. That's why. No. Yeah, about 80 bucks new. Uh, not clamped. It, it's really kind of hard to turn here. The uh, cranker, it does not have a, t a counter. It is really hard to see what pin number you're on. You have to look really, really close, even a smaller width than, for example, the 46 or 48 pins of the Addy or the Centro. So I'm going to go ahead and continue knitting this yarn into a beanie and figured I'd go ahead and uh, let you watch if you'd like. rows but it's already at one two six either tucked or dropped stitches I think the tension on the third one actually is going to be optimal to prevent your tucked and dropped stitches Better. now what's happening is its tension is too tight here so it's causing it to be really difficult to drop down in this part here where it's having a hard time going down and look I already have another drop stitch right here so I'm gonna undo this whole thing because it's not gonna be worth keeping because you can see how I have all these so it could be an issue with that pin that needle right there okay so this should really help you see how the yarn is and the pins work together See right there, it's getting caught up, making the tension really hard. You can feel it in your hand, and you can hear that popping sound. It's because that yarn right there is popping. This is the machine I reviewed, and I did forget to mention that the feet do come out so it makes it easier for storage. A little tensioner, 
And again, really hard to see the, uh, the numbers, but right there you can kind of see. And the crank, right here. And this for the first time, and as you can see, it really had a lot of uh, issues with it. And I'll yeah. just review those again right now. Basically, there is no counter, um, so that's gonna make it really inefficient because every time you go around a row, you're gonna have to stop and somehow mark it, and that's just gonna be inefficient. Secondly, it's really hard to find the number pin you're on. And so I would have to use a Sharpie and go ahead and mark out what number each pin is, it or at least doesn't stay on the table well at all. And so it made it really hard to crank it round and round. It's it made it really, really difficult. light and, and um, you know, it's fairly cheap compared to the other machines out there. So those are two good points for this. Uh, but all in all, I would probably, if you're starting out with a knitting machine, I probably would not go with this one. I would go ahead and go with a either the Addy Express or uh, a different machine. Thanks for watching.